Hey, thanks for checking out our repair channel. Uh, this is going to be a little uh, kind of overview and test and kind of a look on the inside of what this unit and how it's built and how it runs and everything. Um, this is an old school Gallagher unit. This is a uh, M1500. It's an AC powered unit. Uh, pretty good unit. Uh, real reliable. This is the bigger brother uh, unit of the uh, M800 or old Bev 3 was the other uh, model that the uh, uh, M800 looked like. M uh, Gallagher also made a uh, MPE2 that looked very similar to this, but it was a brown tan colored case. This is a, a nice looking unit. It's a purple colored case they used to use on this one. Um, but uh, if you got one of these old units, um, we work on quite a few of them. Uh, they've been around a long time. They stopped making this model back in about 2002, 2003. But they started making it back in the mid-late 80s under another name called a Gallagher Snell um, Super 60 with a little 2 next to it. It said like S60 with a little bitty 2 like in the bottom corner of the sticker. That was the second version of it. They made a Super 60, which was a really uh, kind of an oblong unit. It was like about, I don't know, about this much longer than the other one. And a different sticker. It had a picture of a lamb or a sheep on the front of it. Um, but we'll get into this thing and talk a little bit about it but if you'd like to uh check out more about us you can go to our website which is uh fencerfixer.com uh, fencer and fixer is spelled with an f as in frank and uh we'll i will have a link down in the description tab that will um that you can visit and see more about us but we work on uh, all brands and ages of electric fence boxes uh we do free quotes and 18 month warranties and anything that we work on so if you got a unit that you need looked at, we'd be happy to take a peek at it for you. Um, also, I'll tell a little bit about the serial number of a unit. On most Gallagher's that were manufactured 1999 and newer, maybe 1998 and newer, that might be the cutoff, they had a date code tied in with the serial number. And some brands do this and some brands don't. Uh, it just depends on the age or the brand in general. But you look at a Gallagher unit, like on this one, or even a newer model nowadays, look at the back of the case. Uh, they usually have a sticker on the back, but look for a long 10-digit number, start with a 0 or a 1. Like this one says uh, 02. Don't worry about the G number. This is a product code for the Energizer itself. But the first two digits is the year it was built. So 02 is a 2002 model, uh, is the year it was built. So 19 is the week of that year. If you're really curious, the fifth number there, which is a four, that's a day of that week of that year. So this was manufactured on the fourth day of the 19th week of 2002. The other numbers are just uh, assembly line that was on, the technician or the assembler that put it together or the whatever. Something along those lines or a batch number or something like that. It doesn't have nothing to do with the physical age of the thing. So, well, we'll pull this apart here. It's got a... Um, uh, green light here and a red light here. This is your Energizer OK light. This is a green power light. Tells you, hey, the power's on. These little neon bulbs burn out sometimes, but the unit's still clicking and flashing the red light. You know, okay, my power's on. So it's more of a dummy light than anything. It does have a uh, ground half power and full power or reduced power, as some brands call it. Um, you can run a small section of fence off of this, um, and then the full power is over here. Um, so we'll take it apart real quick. That's what the inside looks like. Look at an M800 or Bev3 or an MPE2. They're similar. M800's got a, they all have a board here and a board there and a capacitor over here and a transformer underneath the board sitting right there. But the M1500 has, the, has a big old capacitors, which is part of the multiplier circuit to build the charge up for the jewels and stuff. And then it also has... Um, Two big capacitors over here. These are both 30 microfarad capacitors. Uh, they're pulse grade capacitors. Um, so together with them wired in parallel, they add it to being 60 microfarads. A Gallagher M800 has a, old ones had a 30 microfarad, but then they eventually came out with a 40 microfarad to go in the place over here. And it has this one long one that runs inside here. And then the MPE2 has a little short one, like this one has one, 30 microfarad capacitor and has a little bitty board about half the size, about that big, roughly. 
uh, MPE2s are about that big, but they don't have all these big old capacitors on there for um, the multipliers. They do it a whole different way. So, but how this unit works, and this is how most brands work, and this what's nice about this is everything's separated, so it's all wired together and separated, so you know how the circuit works. You know, have electric fence box of any kind. This is how they all work. Some just do it different than others. A lot of them aren't separated like this. All most of them nowadays have one great big board and capacitor plugs into it, transfer plugs into it, and there you go. Or wires run over to the to the capacitor transformer. Everybody does it similar but different. So how this unit works is power comes in. There's a fuse on this one. This, some have fuses and some don't. But this one does. Power comes in, goes through the fuse, goes over to the board. This gradually steps to power it through all these big capacitors. Uh, takes that charge. Uh, it actually comes in you know, 110, 120 volts AC. Going through all this mess here, it turns it into like five, six, seven hundred volts DC and it puts it over to this uh, batch of capacitors here and there's a timing mechanism on the board. Some use a chip, some use uh, therm uh, trigger devices, SCRs, thyristors, thyristors, whatever you want to call them. And that one's right here. That's part of the timing circuit to tell it how often you want this thing to pulse. And it also triggers the energy out of these capacitors goes back through the board and over to the transformer down here so it takes that 600 volts dc and high amperage and that uh when it discharges and snaps that energy gets goes through this transformer which the transformer takes that energy turns it into like this one actually goes up to 11,000 volts out of the transformer itself uh, to a higher voltage lower current and amperage uh, through this output board and then out to the terminals for your fencing ground. This board here, the only thing it really does, all this stuff here, these little orange things and some of this other stuff, is part of the lightning protection uh, for the unit on the fence and ground side. It also um, divides the voltage out for your half power and your full power as well through this resistor here. Um, most people don't use this half power. Occasionally, this resistor will go bad, and you lose your half power, but you still have your full power. Uh, I would say about 90% of the people that bought these didn't even use the half power. Unless the full power side went bad, then I guess if you're in a pinch, you could use a half power. It just doesn't have near the um, uh, voltage. Well, the voltage is about the same between full and half. This uh, joules is a lot less because there's a resistor here limiting how much is coming out of here. But it does all that stuff in about a second or less. It does it really quick, or maybe a second and a half. So there's your power light. tells you, hey, the power's on. It's a little green neon bulb. And then you got a fence okay light, which is that red one there. Every time the flashes, that's when it should be putting out the voltage to your fence. And it takes about 3,000 volts or more to make that light flash. So if you're hooked up to the fencing ground and the light's flashing, typically it means you're got you're good to go. But if for some reason light goes out, you could be the fence problem where it's dragging it below 3,000 volts, or you've got something wrong with the unit. Now I'm gonna put a dead short across it. It will still pulse, but the light will go out. So this would be a kind of a worst case situation. You can see the red light stopped flashing, but the unit's still clicking. So if you go and uh, unplug your unit, disconnect your fencing ground, plug it back in, and the light goes back to flashing, usually that means the fence has got a problem and your energizer is okay. There's one other test you can do, and it usually works well on a Gallagher M800, M1500, BEV3, uh, MPE2, and there might be another one uh, that I'm not thinking of. But if you hook up, say the unit all by itself, looks like it's working fine. If you hook up just the ground system to it and it still shows good, that means your transformer is okay. But if you hook up just your ground and the light goes out and it still clicks, that means you got a bad transformer. I, I don't know what Gallagher calls it. I call it the ground test is what I call it. 
And it won't, that's the, about, this is about the only brand I really do it on. And it's not like a kind of a last resort test to make sure that the unit's running fine. Um, so, but that's called the ground test. You, you hook up just your ground to it and the unit still shows good. Then it's, you know, something's wrong with the fence. Um, that's the only thing that will drag a unit down. Unless one of your capacitors gets weak and maybe there's a little bit of grass on the fence. And if the capacitors get weak, that's what helps keep the, uh, helps it fight through the problems on the fence. Um, but if one of these starts getting really weak or goes bad, then it doesn't have, any, have much power to power through whatever problems out there. And, uh, you know, the unit, you know, gets really weak on its uh, joules. Um, and also these will, uh, these, get, these capacitors get weak up here or one goes bad. Uh, it will actually pulse a little bit faster. As you can tell, this one's pulsing about every one and a half seconds. Sometimes when one of these gets really that they start both getting really weak at a pulse like every one second or give or take. And um, that could be a sign of a weak capacitor here on one of these two or one of these capacitors is bad on the board. So that's another little thing to look at. But uh, we'll put a voltmeter across it. We're getting... About 9,9500 volts out of it. At a 15 store joule unit, it probably outputs about 8. So it has a hell of a shock to it. Nice, nice unit. These are really, really good units. So if you've got one of these things, or if you find one at a farm sale or a state sale or whatever, or your granddad had one, or your dad has one, and uh, they're basically the same whether they're 20 years old, you know, back in the 80s, or they're made in the early 2000s, late 90s. Um, they're basically all the same. I mean, they've made some changes to the parts, and the boards look a little different over time from a different version or whatever, but they're all, you can still make a 1989 model run like a 2000 model because all the parts are interchangeable. Now, not all parts for this are available. Output boards can be rebuilt, but they do make new ones. Main boards can be rebuilt, but they do make new ones. And those new board, main boards are over $100 brand new, probably $150 probably, I'd say, give or take. We can usually fix those for a lot less money. The output boards are about $50, bucks, 40 bucks, somewhere in that range, brand new. And we can usually repair those for less than half that. Uh, capacitors you can get all day long and those capacitors that are inside there other brands use the same capacitor like uh, Stay Fix and Speed Right use a very similar capacitor uh, Cyclops uses a very similar capacitor so they're not made by Gallagher doesn't make their own capacitor they have somebody else make them but Gallagher does make their own transformers in house uh, they build their own boards in house they don't have things outsourced to China and then they get the boards there and they assemble them they're made by them in house uh, Gallagher does a lot of things in-house, like a lot of their insulators, at least their heavy-duty ones, not the standard ones, are made in-house. Their standard ones are probably made in China or Japan. Like That's where a lot of um, insulators are made, those yellow ones. I don't care if it's Zariba, Power Wizard, who, uh, who it is, they're all made in China. Um, uh, the only ones I know that are made here in the States uh, are Parmac. Parmac makes um, a lot of their... Uh, uh, insulators in-house as well. They're cheaper, but they do make them, or at least they're wire, they're bay guard wire. That's made in-house. I've been to the factory and watched them make those uh, braided wire in-house um, and stuff. So, But uh, hopefully it's helped you on how to understand how an energizer works or a fence charger works. Um, like I said, we work in all brands, all ages. Uh, electric fence boxes, you can go to our website there, fenceoffixer.com. You can do free estimates. And an 18-month repair warranty on everything that we work on. We do work on livestock scales and EID tag readers and livestock load bars for cat weighing cattle and stuff like that. We work on a multitude of brands. I mean, if it's electric fence box, I don't care what it is. Uh, the only ones we can't really work on are Patriot stuff because they don't make any parts for them. They're just a throwaway brand, cheapo thing. Um, we have our favorites that we like to work on because of their you know, well-built stuff. And then there's the crap kind that are out there. But we'll work on those crappy ones, too. They're just not really well built. They are cheaper in price. But, you know, if you want a good unit, get a Gallagher. Uh, 
especially these old school ones are really, really well built. They'd go 20 years with not much issues at all. Less lightning gets on them, but that'll get about anything. But hopefully you like this video. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And until we do another video of how one works or a review of a, of a, of a particular unit or how to fix one, we will see you guys next time.